Good morning, evening, afternoon, night, whenever you're watching this, geographers, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we're going to be continuing our conversation with Unit 7 of AP Human Geography. Today, we're going to be going into Unit 7, Topic 2, Economic Sectors and Patterns. When looking at the economy, we can see that we have different classifications for production. The first classification is primary activities. These are jobs that deal with natural resources. Fishermen, farmers, coal miners are all example of jobs that are low located within the primary sector. The next classification is the secondary sector. These are jobs and activities that use raw materials gathered from the primary sector and produce and manufacture them into a products of greater value. An example here would be processing wheat into flour or using lumber from cut down trees to make plywood. The location of where this production will happen will vary depending on the cost of transporting the raw resources and the final product to the market. Next we have the tertiary sector. Here activities are based on services. These are located in areas where there is a need for the service. Examples of activities in this sector would include lawyers, doctors, or people in sales. As countries develop and their economies start to advance with them, we see more and more people work in the tertiary sector. And eventually the tertiary sector can be broken up into two other categories as well. We can look at the quaternary sector and also the quinary sector. The quaternary sector is about acquiring, processing, and sharing information. Examples of activities in this sector include include journalism, people in finance, insurance, real estate, or other industries that focus on information collecting and processing. The quinary sector deals with activities and jobs that are involved in making decisions. Examples of activities and jobs in this sector would be executives, people in government roles, such as the president of the country, or the CEO of a company. One thing to notice here is that the quaternary and the quinary sector are still services, so they're part of the tertiary sector. However, the quaternary and quinary are more specialized and focus. So they're a subcategory of the tertiary sector. When looking at countries around the world and the development of society, we can see that countries that are less economically advanced are more likely to have primary activities as their main economic production. And as they develop, they move into the secondary sector, tertiary, and eventually the quinary and quaternary. Speaking of economic development, as we look at the world, we can see different trends and patterns in economies in core countries, semi-periphery countries, and all also periphery countries. Core countries have the most advanced economies and traditionally have a higher standard of living. Here we see more jobs located in the tertiary, quinary, and quaternary sector. Examples here would be the United States, Canada, and many of the European countries. Semi-periphery countries are seeing their standard of living increase, with more industrialization occurring. More jobs now are located in the secondary sector and also starting to see some jobs opening up in the tertiary. Examples of these countries would be Mexico, Brazil, China, and India, just to name a few. Lastly, we have periphery countries. Here the standard of living is low, with most of the production being exported to more developed countries. The majority of the jobs in these countries are located within the primary sector, with some starting to move into the secondary sector. Today we can see that many periphery countries are located in Africa and Asia. Another trend that we can see when looking at the world economy is that companies in core countries are offshoring production to developing countries. Countries. They're moving production into the semi-periphery and also the periphery countries. And the reason is because of labor costs. Labor is significantly less expensive in these developing countries. And so when companies move their production over to these countries, they're able to reduce their production costs and increase their profit margin. And we can see that due to advancements in transportation, it's now even easier and also cheaper to produce in other countries around the world, as now the cost of shipping has significantly come down, making it easier to transport raw resources resources, and finished goods around the globe. This has lowered the cost of production for companies, which has decreased the price of goods and increased company profit margins. This has led core countries and businesses around the world to continue to move production and use raw resources from countries that are located in the periphery and semi-periphery. Now with this focus on global trade and company shipping products around the world, we're starting to see break of bulk points get used more and more. Break of bulk points are when we're transferring goods from one mode of transportation to another mode of transportation. Transportation. This happens when we are transporting things over long distances. An example of a break of bulk point would be when a cargo ship comes into a port. The cargo ship will be unloaded, those containers will be taken off the ship and then loaded onto a different mode of transportation. Most of the time it'll be a train or a truck, and then that train or truck will take those goods and distribute them throughout the state. And since we're on the topic of production, we have to talk about Alfred Weber's least cost theory. Weber's least cost 
theory looks at resources, the production, and also the markets in which the final goods will be sold at. The goal of this is to be able to understand where a company should locate its production in order to minimize their costs. And in order to do this, a company needs to understand if their product is a bulk gaining good or a bulk reducing good. Bulk gaining goods will often see production located near the market in which they're going to be sold. And that's because as production happens, these goods become heavier. They're more difficult to transport. And so by locating your production near the market, companies are able to reduce their costs and will then increase their profit margins. On the other hand, we can see that bulk reducing goods will be more likely to locate near the raw resources. That's because as production happens here, the goods get lighter. They're easier to transport. So it makes more sense to do the production near the raw resources since that's where the transportation costs are. And if one of the resources was heavier or bulkier than the other, we would locate production closer to that resource. Another aspect that Weber looked at when trying to determine the location of production was the cost of labor and agglomeration. Agglomeration is when businesses cluster together to share services, to share customers or infrastructure to help reduce costs. This allows them to be more efficient, be able to produce more and also maximize their profit margins. We can see that the least cost theory ends up creating a triangle and in Inside this triangle would be the location of production. We can see that we have the location of raw resources that would be used to be able to produce our product and also the market in which our products will be sold. And again, remember this theory is using bulk reducing, bulk gaining, agglomeration, and cost of labor to determine the ideal location for our production with inside this model. All right, geographers, today we reviewed break of bulk points, the different economic sectors. We talked about bulk gaining, bulk reducing, Weber's least cost cost theory, and also agglomeration. We covered a bunch of stuff, so let's make sure you understand everything and review. Answer the questions on the screen right now, and when you're done, check your answers in the comments below. Also, if you need a little bit more help in your AP Human Geography class, check out my Ultimate Review Packet. It is a great resource that covers all seven units of AP Human Geography, and it'll help you get an A in your class and also a five on that national exam. You can find a link to the packet in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and as always, I'll see you next time. I'm online.